Good morning. Are y'all awake? All right. All right. So today, if you're interested in being transformed, this is the place to be, right? Right. You got to give up yourself. Pick up that cross and follow him. And that's really the only way to do it. Just take a few moments to welcome each other to church this morning. Good to see you guys. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? 
Good. How you doing, bro? All right. <laughs> uh, good to see everybody here. Uh, glad y'all are here. If you're visiting with us, we're glad you came. Um, let's do the announcements. Here we go. Women's will meet Thursday, April the 18th at 6.30 for the Ladies Fellowship. And then the men's going to get together that same night and we'll do our thing. Um, what is y'all We're going to wait till the last minute. Yeah, yeah. We still figure out how guys are. We're just glad you ladies finally got y'all stuff together so we could do something. Uh, what's going on to the next one? At 4 30 today, we'll have a discipleship training. There's a class for the men and women. So y'all come out and join that if you ain't been a part of it. Uh, yearly donations report are in the back of the sanctuary. Uh, Children's Church is available for pre-K through second grade. And that's happening today, right? We didn't have it last week. Um, I think there's Children's Church today. <laughs> I think. I ain't heard nobody say no. But... Um, Who's doing class today? Anybody? Who's doing the children's class today? They're upstairs. Are they? Okay, so we're having it. Uh, Freedom Seekers meet at uh, Monday night at 6.30. Y'all come on and enjoy that. At 9.15 on Sunday mornings, we have classes for men and women. Y'all come and be a part of that. Uh, adults, children, and teen classes on Wednesday evenings. Like I said, y'all come out and be a part of that too. Uh, and we will observe the Lord's Supper this Friday night at 6.30 here at the church. So y'all come out and be a part of that too. Uh, leading up to, that be on the Good Friday. Leading up to next week, for Easter. And uh, is there anything else if I left off? Anybody got anything they want to say or add? Good. Love Jesus. Love Jesus. <laughs> You know, I was told, and I don't have any information, but y'all, they've been doing a search for the ladies. Yes. And, and uh, I know this afternoon, there are folks going to, to look, gather up, and does anybody else have anything? I was just meant to be no, talking this morning, so, but I'm sure. Did y'all hear him? Uh, what do you got? We had the sheriff come to our house yesterday, twice, because um, she lives in our area. Yeah. So if y'all want to go out and help search, they're doing a, another search today. So uh, we'll be praying for the family. And that's what I was going to get to. Um, we got a lot going on. Like I said, we got that woman. Uh, my brother-in-law had an accident, so y'all be praying for Margaret Ann and Robert. I've seen on the news where, like in Russia, at a concert, they had over 100 people killed, a man shooting it up. There's just so much going on. Yeah. And um, so it's hard. So my thing is on praying, praising the Lord through hard times. You know, it's hard. You know, it's what we talked with Brother Larry about. So good to see Brother Larry here. You know, he had uh, stand put in his heart. So good to see you. He's trying to soften that old heart up. So he had to. <laughs> I'm messing with you. But. <laughs> But all right, that's what I'm talking about, praising. But that's what I told Larry, you know, praise. We are talking about praising Jesus through hard. We know it's hard, but the next time I'm going through something, you know, I hear about it, but I don't know if I've ever really done it. So I've been focused on next time I'm going through something, I want to try to praise Jesus through it, and I want to see how that goes. So y'all can try it in your own life. If you're going through something now, try to praise him, but... If you ain't going through something now, this next time you go through something, let's try praising Jesus through it. But it says, there is power when you praise Jesus. There are all kinds of stories that we read about in the Bible about the power that comes from praising God. So when we lift our hearts in faith and we praise the Lord, then His glory, His power, His presence comes down. So in Psalm 22, 3, it says, but thou art, thou art, 
Thou art holy, O thou, O thou that inhabit the praise of Israel. So it says, uh, this means that God occupies, he lives in the praises of his people. So we can see miracles happen because of the praise. Chains are loosened and battles are won when we begin to praise him. And I didn't bring my Bible up here, which is one right here. But I didn't want to go too long. But there's an example. There's a story in Second Chronicles. It's about uh, jo <laughs> Jehoshaphat. There's an enemy army coming up there in three different <coughs> people. The Moab. Uh, anyway, there's three different groups coming after him. And he don't know what to do. But it says uh, there's an army coming against Jehoshaphat in verse 2015. That's what I said. I forgot to bring my Bible. But it's talking about, uh, he didn't know what to do, but the Lord said, the battle's not yours, it's the Lord. So whatever you're going through, the battle's not yours. Give it to the Lord. Amen. And then um, it says in the, I read on down, then it gets into the story in verses 20 and 23. But uh, the people turned on themselves, you know, and they destroyed themselves. But it says, Jehoshaphat didn't even have to fight. They chose to praise God. So praising God shall become a priority in our lives. The power, there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, that story of Jehoshaphat is one of my favorites. Yeah, mine too. Sending that army over, you know, the first thing you want to do, you want to put your toughest men right on the on the front lines to face the enemy. But God told him, don't do that. Put the singers, the yeah. worshipers yeah. up there. And as they began to praise God, as they went over that hill, they sent God sent confusion among that enemy. The enemy turned on themselves, and the victory was won. Amen. Yeah, really. As God's people praised Him. Amen. Next Sunday is Easter. I encourage you to invite somebody to be at church next Sunday. Already begin that to get to be getting ready for to celebrate. But guys, you know what? We know we serve the risen Savior. We don't have to wait till Easter Sunday to, to celebrate that Jesus is alive, amen. And to be led to that cross and see what he's done for us on that cross. And this morning, uh, we just want to already be anticipating uh, that. And uh, we encourage you to come out Friday night and be a part of Good Friday, uh, Lord's Supper on Good Friday. We're going to have a a time to focus on Jesus and get prepare ourselves for Easter. But we're gonna sing this song. Scott's gonna lead us in this. Lead me to the cross. Leave me. 
Amen, amen. All right, church, church. Preschool up to the second grade. You can head out to the you have your Bibles this morning, turn me to Mark, Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11. I almost messed up there, ladies, and gave me something totally different, huh? Mark chapter 11. Well, it is Palm Sunday, and uh, we think about Jesus. Uh, you know, as I look, and I heard Kelly talk about all the news, I kind of got this morning and began to see some of the things going on around the world, and and it, it is kind of overwhelming, really, when we see so much that's happening. And it's, you know, if we if we hadn't read the end of the book, I'm going to tell you, if I didn't know what the end of the book says and what Jesus is going to do, I tell you, it would be a, a very scary time that we're living in right now. I mean, even, even knowing the times that are coming, it's still at times kind of overwhelming and kind of scary to think about what is going to happen between, uh, between now and the coming of Jesus. But, you know, it's this morning as we think about Jesus coming into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, riding on a mule, right? Coming in uh, in a way that really was less than who he really was. We're reminded that the day is coming when he's going to come in to Jerusalem in a whole different fashion. And uh, we're going to look at this this morning in Mark chapter 11. It says, And when they came nigh unto Jerusalem, unto Bethage, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered in, you shall find a colt tied whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do you do this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him. And straightway he will send him hither. And when they went and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met, and they loosed him. And certain of them stood there, said unto him, them, What do ye, loosing the colt? And they said to them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him. And he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way. And others cut down branches off the trees. And strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. God, I ask for you just to speak today, Lord. Just give us a word from you, Lord. God, we don't need a word from me. We need a word from you. And so, Lord, I pray you just speak through me. I pray you bring to remembrance the things that I read, the things that you placed on my heart this week, God. I pray especially for someone who's here today that does not know you as their Lord and personal Savior. I pray that, to, that today will be the day of salvation for them, God. I pray for somebody who's just been putting that decision off and they've been resisting and quenching the Holy Spirit in their life. And I pray that they will... They will give in today to the leadership and the, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the drawing of the Spirit, Lord, to the, to the cross and to the resurrection of Jesus, Lord. Have your way today in this place, God. We pray that the name of Christ be exalted in all that we do, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So Jesus comes, the Lord's favorite place, and he comes nigh unto Jerusalem and to Bethage. And Bethany, he stayed at Bethany uh, much of the time with some friends he had there, Lazarus and, and the two sisters, Mary and Martha. And, and he would spend time with that family. They were close to him. And, and Jesus, as he's there, this little city close to Jerusalem, he tells his disciples, now, now you go forward into this village over against you. And as soon as ye entered in, oh, notice there, this is well, I don't mean to skip this, at the Mount of Olives. So here's the thing. We find Jesus coming to Jerusalem again, and he's at the Mount of Olives, close to the Mount of Olives. And you know what the Bible says when he returns? The Bible says he's going to return at the Mount of Olives. The Bible, I tell you, it ties in from Genesis to Revelation. All these things don't just happen just, just to happen. They happen for a purpose and a plan and a reason. And so when Jesus returns, I'm telling you, riding a white horse with all his armies, 
The Bible says he's going to set his seat on the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is going to create a valley there. I believe he's going to create a valley right there at the Mount of Olives where it's going to split. And I'm telling you, the world will never be the same after that day. Jesus here, he sends his disciples in. He says, I'm, I'm preparing. He's going to enter in to Jerusalem. He knows that the time is coming for the cross. He knows that, that his, his time uh, the, is almost done here on earth as far as in his earthly ministry. He's, he's already told the disciples what's coming. He's, he's making his way there, and he sends them to, and he says this to them, Go your way into the village over against you. As soon as you enter into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man set, loose him, and bring him. Now, as we look at this, I think of my, I, I always, when I read stories like this, especially in the Gospels, I always like to put myself kind of in that place. And what would that have been like to see this? What would it have been like to hear Jesus make, I mean, he's making a prophetic utterance here. He's letting them know, hey, provision has been made. I'm going to send you into this town and you're going to find that, that the colt that I have need of now is going to be there. This is what you're going to find when you get there. And so that tells us that Jesus uh, knew things that beyond what any man could know. He understood things and saw things like, like no other man could see. The Holy Spirit would reveal these things to him. And so he sends them. And I, I think of myself here, what it been like to be one of the disciples and, and, and seeing that and hearing those instructions. And, and have you ever had somebody just tell you, you know, ever had a job where they send you on a task? And, and, and I remember when I was working years ago for Mets, a TV Applied to Jonesboro. And I remember being sent to, to, a, uh, uh, to a house there. And I had a task there that I was supposed to accomplish. And I had never been in that house before. I didn't know what the people were going to be like. But I had something to install there. And I remember getting there and thinking, is all the parts going to be there? Is the stuff going to be there? What's going to happen when I get there? And I remember the apprehension of, of how am I going to be received? You know, they, I mean, they don't know me, you know, and is this going to go well? And am I going to tear up their cabinet or what, what's going to happen in all this? By the way, I had never installed a dishwasher before, <laughs> just to mention that. And so there was a lot of apprehensive, a lot of, uh, I was very apprehensive about doing this. I was the TV guy, not the dishwasher guy, right? But we were running short, and they're like, well, if you can work on a TV, surely you can install a dishwasher. Well, I got installed, but whoo, man, took a lot of prayer, right? But I remember that being apprehensive. But the one who was my boss told me, hey, here's what you do. The parts are going to be there. The dishwasher's going to be there. Uh, I'm going to send somebody also to come along a little after and check on you, make sure how things are going, and, and it'll get finished, right? It'll get done. The disciples had to be, uh, you know, we're going to walk up and basically just take these people's cold, right? Jesus has told us to walk up and, and loose this cold that is somebody's property and take it. Now, we may think, well, I'd just go up and do that, but, you know, it would be, you know, we would, we would pause for something like that a lot of times. And a lot of times Jesus may call us to do something in life, and we don't have all the details as to what he's called us to do. There are instructions in the Word of God that he tells us, hey, here's what I've got for you. And oftentimes, because we don't have all the details uh, down to, and, and he even gives them a lot of details here. He even tells them exactly where it's going to be. But we oftentimes hold back from doing some of the things because we, we somehow doubt in our minds, even if we trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, oftentimes we may doubt to follow his instructions in some areas of our life. I want to encourage you, don't doubt him. I want to encourage you to trust him. I, I want you to know something, guys. You can trust the word of God to lead you in the right way. Amen? He's never going to lead you wrong. Listen, when God's word speaks, it's true. And so when we look at this, he tells them to go. And I, again, as I say this, I try to put myself in the way of the disciples. I try to think about even those who were there, or even the people who, who owned the coat. What would it felt like for, to walk up on those guys? But, but I want you to know something. The, person, the one in this story, I believe that I, I, in my life, have closest resembled is not the disciples, it's not Jesus, it's not the owners of the cult. It's the stubborn cult itself. 
Amen? It's that cult itself. Jesus tells the disciples to go into this village and they're going to find a cult. And the first thing he says about it is the cult is tied. He's tied. Listen, before Jesus set me free, I was tied up. Amen? Amen? I was, listen, I may have thought I was running free, but Satan, listen, he had a leash on me. He had me captured. He had me entangled in things. And listen, I couldn't, this cult could not untangle himself from how he was tied up. Amen? Listen, he was secured there and held. Someone owned him. Amen? Listen, guys. We need Jesus to come along and loose us from the things. And by the way, Jesus will use other people, other Christians, with the gospel, with the good news that we share to help us be set free from the one who now owns us. Amen? He said, you're going to find a cult, and he's tied up. <laughs> We're on never man's set. He's not only is he tied up, but he's wild. <laughs> Amen? He's just wild. He's not being uh, broken in, right? He wants to do what he wants to do, right? He's, he's tied up because if, if he's not tied up, he'll just, he'll just run anywhere, right? <laughs> so he's not only tied up, he's wild. He's, he's just wild. They can't, you can't do anything with him. <laughs> Listen, guys, you've got to not just become religious. You've got to let Jesus come in. And tame your heart. Tame your emotions. See, one of the reasons why there are folks who come into church for a while, but they continue to go the way of the world, they continue to do all the stuff they were doing, is because, listen, they've got religion, but they're still, they've still yet, they've still not allowed Jesus to come and be enthroned on the seat of their heart. To bring them under submission to his authority. Guys, listen, some of the ungodliest people I ever met were church members. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let me just clue you in on something. Just because you're a church member doesn't mean you're in the body of Christ. Amen. Just because you've got your name on a church roll does not necessarily mean your name has been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, I'm all about coming to church, and I'm all about being a member of a church, and I'm all about joining together. I believe as a Christian, I ought to have a desire to be with other believers. And in fact, if I say I'm saved, but I don't have a desire to come together with other believers, I, I've got to ask myself some hard questions about why that is. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Listen, when I came to the Lord and surrendered, the first thing I wanted was to be around other people so I could talk about what was happening in me and so I could hear what God had done for them. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen, brother. I'm telling you, the night I turned it all over to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm done with this, and come in and, and forgive me. And, and so, I'm telling you, I was on the phone just because I knew friends who, who were ahead of me, who had been saved, who witnessed to me. And listen, I immediately wanted to be around them. Because I wanted to know what it was like to let Jesus lead your life. Amen? So they find this coat, or they, they're told here, they're going to find this coat tied, and every man had set on him, and they're told to loose him and bring him. <laughs> loose him and bring him. I think about Lazarus when Jesus called him out of the tomb. He was alive, but he still had to be loosed. Amen? And others come along and they begin to remove those wrappings from him so he could fully be free and come to Jesus. Amen? Listen, the cult... 
the disciples have begun the instruction to loose him. Guys, we're given instructions as believers to preach the gospel to the world around us, to those that don't know Christ, so that they can be loosed from the enemy, so Jesus can tame their heart, and so that we can loose them and bring them to, not church, but to him. Now, man, it's a good thing to bring folks to church. But our commission is firstly to bring them to know Christ. Amen. Listen, there are churches all over the country, all over the world that are trying to, you know, get their numbers up. And they'll do all kinds of things to get people to fill seats. And yet, they stop short in many cases of bringing them to know Christ. I heard one televangelist spoken of here a few years ago where this little family was talking about going to church there. And they said, one of them said, I'm a Muslim. And the other said, well, I'm an atheist. And the other said, I'm a Christian. And they said, this is the first church we found that we can come to and none of us get offended. I wanted to say, you're not in a church. <laughs> Listen, if a Muslim and a Christian and an atheist can all come to a quote-unquote church and nobody get offended, can I tell you something? Truth is not being preached in that church. Amen. Amen. Listen, there ain't a sermon I've ever preached where I didn't get offended by in some way. Amen. Right, brother. Because listen, when we think about it, when we look at what God has called us to, we've got to recognize that, that God is going to convict us of sin. He's going to challenge us to move forward with him. He's going to, listen, he's going, and because here's the deal, guys, we, we are humbled every time we come we, into the presence of God and we get under his word, we, 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 all of a sudden we recognize we're much like Isaiah. We're, we're a man of unclean lips in the midst of the people of unclean lips. And even if we've been saved, we recognize that without the grace and mercy of God, we could not stand before God in his presence. All the religious activity and all the things that we do, none of that gets us one step closer to, to heaven. We need Jesus. So he tells them, bring him. And if any man say unto you, why do you this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him. And straightway he will send him thither. Amen. You know something you're going to find? You get saved, not everybody's going to be happy about it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Look, if, you're, if you've been a drug addict, and you get saved, some of your drug buddies aren't going to like that. They're going to be upset with you. One, because you're no longer participating in the activities and, 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 and perhaps maybe you're not giving them money that they were, you know, in some relationships that you were receiving. So all of a sudden it's impacted their ability to receive something. And you may find, and, and in other cases, they may get under conviction just based on the fact that you exist and you walked away from it and you're living a life for Christ and they're not. Amen. Amen. Guys, when you get saved, don't expect everybody to stand up and cheer. There may be some who protest and say, where are you going? Why aren't, you, why aren't you running around here anymore like you used to? Why don't I see you at the liquor store anymore? Got quiet after that. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I don't see you doing the same things you used to do. I don't see you talking the same way you used to talk. Your language has changed. Amen? Amen? Listen, I've told the story many, many times, but when you look through history and church history, you go back to the Welsh revival with Evan Roberts. Listen, the coal miners got so filled with the Spirit of God, they got so saved that when they went back to the coal mines, they had to retrain the mules. Amen. Amen. 
because they didn't cuss anymore. And the mules had to learn new commandments because they just cussed them all the time. Now that's revival. That's transformation. That's change, right? That's when Jesus comes and just and changes even the way you talk. Right? You don't talk like you used to talk. There's an old Southern Gospel song I love that says the old man is dead. I'm serving Jesus now. I'm not, I'm not going to the same places. I'm not. Amen? Amen? Listen, guys, when Jesus sets you free, there's a change. But not everybody's going to understand that. Not everybody's going to like that. You may have close friends who no longer want to hang with you. You may have family members. But guess what? God's given you a whole new family. Amen. 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 You, have, you may have family members that say, we're not going to invite them over because they just went crazy. <laughs> right? They become a holy road. They become a Jesus freak. Right? Amen. 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 They what's happened to them? It's not a what, really, it's a, more of a who, isn't it? See, somebody came into their life and changed them. Amen. There was a lady one time that met Jesus at a well. And Jesus said, Go get your husband. She goes, I don't have one. She said, he said, you're right. You've got a man, though, don't you? And you're not living in the right situation with him. But you've had husbands before. And the guy you're with is not your husband. And he lets her know, listen, you've been looking for fulfillment and joy and peace and, and all the things belonging, all those things that, that every person wants. And you've been looking for that in a person in, in, in other men. This old song says, you've been looking for love in all the wrong places. Amen. Right? <clears throat> and now you've come to the one who is the living water. Mm -hmm. And listen, that lady, when she encountered Jesus, and eventually opened her eyes up to who she was talking to, she ran into the city and began to tell everybody about the man who she just met. Some of them initially they thought, oh boy, she's met another man. <laughs> but I guarantee you it didn't take long for them to say, this lady's no longer the same. Whoever this man is that she's met this time, he has turned her world upside down. He has transformed her. He has changed her. There's a difference in her because of this man, Jesus. So they were told to go. And if any man disputed it, Tell them the Lord has need of him. Now listen, I, I love that because the truth is God doesn't have needs, right? So this is kind of one of those situations where we go, wait a minute, God, God has everything. He, he has no need. And yet Jesus, yet God chooses to have a need for you and I. God chooses to say, I want him and I want her. And I'm going to use them for my kingdom. I need them to lead that church. I need them to share the gospel. I, it's not a need that, because God doesn't have, it's that God chooses to involve us in the work that he's already doing. <laughs> what an honor to be picked by Jesus, to be chosen. The Bible says, you need to realize this, that you were chosen by him. Amen. 
And certain of them that stood there said to them, Oh, wait. And they went their way, verse 4, and found the colt tied by the door without in a place, look at this, where two ways met. In a place. You know, that's where, that's where a lot of people are right now. They're at a fork in the road. Amen. They're at a place where they've come through life and they reach a point where they make a decision. We all come to this at some point where we choose. Am I going to go down the wide road that leads to destruction? Or am I going to go down the narrow road that leads to life everlasting? Amen? This colt found himself at a fork in the road. Amen? This morning, let me ask you something. Are you tired of the same old, same old? Are you tired of life just... Are you tired of not getting any victory? Are you tired of, of, of trying to rule things yourself and you just mess everything up? Amen. Are you tired of Satan just getting his way in your life because you just keep submitting to him rather than submitting to the Lord who loves you and died for you? Well, it's time to follow that command Amen. and come to Jesus. It's time to leave the wide road that leads to destruction and get on the road that he has called you to follow. Amen? Amen. 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 They find this cult, just as Jesus said, but in a place where two ways met. And certain of them that stood there said to them, Why? What do you loosen the cult? Here, here they come. What are you doing? Letting his coat go. Hmm. Well, Jesus has a greater plan for that coat than they had. Jesus has a greater plan for your life than your mama had for you. Or your daddy had for you. Or that you had for you. Amen? His plan for you goes far beyond anything you can ask or think or imagine. And they said to them, even as Jesus had commanded. You see, told them, tell them, the Lord has need of them. And they let them go. Can I tell you something? They didn't have any other option, really. When Jesus speaks the word. Amen. And, and listen, they're just repeating what Jesus had said. Let me tell you something. We don't have to come up with all kinds of new words and new ideas. If we'll just repeat the things that Jesus has said, if we'll just get into the word of God and when Satan tries to hold us and bind us, if we'll just speak the word of God, we'll speak the truth. I want you to know something. The demons had no option but to listen to what Jesus has said. Even when, when Jesus was in the wilderness and Satan come, Satan, Jesus just quoted scripture right back at him. Amen. Amen. Listen, a lot of folks will go through all kinds of ways, but listen, the word of God, God gives us his word to do battle with, right? The sword of the spirit, right? That when we get into situations where we, we need to be, see freedom. We speak the word of God. They just repeated what Jesus had spoken. And they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus. And cast their garments on him. And he set upon him. They cast their garments on the colt. Let me tell you something. The colt didn't look the same anymore, did he? He's dressed completely different. Amen? Amen. He's been covered. <laughs> Listen, you get saved. Don't you know something? Jesus clothes you in his righteousness. Right? You, you are able to cast aside the old garment. 
Because you've been given a new garment. Man. The colt didn't look the same anymore. Instead of looking like a wild heathen. Right? He's been broken. By Christ. You know what? God, it's been said that God can't use a man until he breaks a man. Part of salvation involves humility. You've got to realize you have a great need, don't you? See, if you don't think you need Jesus, you're never going to fully, truly accept Jesus. If you think Jesus can just be an add-on to your life, and you just kind of, you know, you can take him or leave him, then here's the reality. You can pray uh, and repeat a prayer all you want to, or you can be baptized, or whatever you want to do, and go through religious motions and still be on your way to hell. You've got to humble yourself and admit. Repentance really requires humility and brokenness to recognize I'm a sinner. I sure need a Savior. And I'm sure thankful God's provided one for me and this man named Jesus. The colt is now clothed with garments and he's able to now carry Jesus into the city for everyone in his path to see. What has God called us to do? He's called us to carry the gospel, to take Jesus into the highways and the hedges, to take Jesus into our cities, to take Jesus into our families, to take Jesus into our school, to do that wherever we go, we carry Jesus into those situations. And, and our hope is that they don't, the attention is not on us, but it's on the one who we are carrying into that situation. That they don't look to us, but they look to Jesus. Amen. As they brought the coat, he cast the garment, he sat upon it. Look at what happens. Many spread their garments in the way. And others cut down branches off the trees. And straw them in the way. Now, can I tell you something? Nobody did that because of who the donkey was. Nobody said, hey, look at that donkey. No. Their eyes were upon the one who the donkey carried. Amen. Amen. See, it doesn't matter if anybody knows our name or we're recognized or, you know, for, for those called to ministry, whether you preach a pastor of a mega church or, or your sermons go around the world, none of that matters. What matters is that you're obedient to the Lord and you just take Jesus where he's called you to take him. Amen. 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 This mule or donkey has a task at hand. It's cold to carry Jesus into Jerusalem for his triumphal what's now called a triumphal entry. He comes in. He is headed to the cross and the people begin to see and they basically throw these things down as they would if royalty was entering into the city. Now, who could have, who could have, how could they have known that a king was coming into the city? Because kings didn't ride mules or colts. Right? They would come in with an entourage, chariots, horses, camels, not a meager colt. You know what that tells me? Listen. Listen to this. You don't have to have it all together to carry Jesus Amen. to somebody. 
You don't have to have great stature. You don't have to have great education. You don't have to have the perfect reputation. Amen. Somebody ought to shout right there. Yeah. Because it's not about you. It's about the one who you carry. It's about the one who you bring to the people. Eyes were not on the cold. Eyes were on the Lord. Man, I, my heart breaks over, you know, every year I, I see some of these churches that put on these Easter programs that that are more about flesh than the Lord. And I mean, some of it's just crazy, some of the stuff that I, I saw last year. I thought, how does that, what does that have to do with Jesus dying on a cross and raising from the dead? It's just, but it, it's become it just total entertainment. I don't want, I'm going to tell you, I want nothing at all to do with that. Yeah. Guys, the Lord is just looking for humble servants. You don't have to be the best looking. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Yeah. You don't have to be the right age. I've even seen where kids get a hold of the Lord and their whole family begins to come to Jesus. I've seen where dads and grandpas, grandmas, Come to Jesus, and you know what? Their family starts coming to Jesus because of what the Lord is doing in them. You don't have to have it all together yet. Listen, this happens almost immediately, right? He didn't. They didn't tell the cold. Okay, go to seminary. That's right. Right. Okay. You know we're gonna do this. No, they brought him to Jesus. And as soon as they brought him to Jesus, they called him, and Jesus gets upon him, and he begins to take Jesus into the, that's the picture we see here. And the people begin to throw down garments and branches. And they went before, in verse 9, and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is a word of adoration. Your king has come. Amen. Adore him. Worship him. Praise him. What would it be if our churches got a hold of that? What would it be if the church adored Jesus? As much as the football fan adored their favorite team. What if we love the Lord more than we love our stuff? What if we loved him more than we love our family or our career? There was a time when Jesus said, if a man doesn't hate his family, his father and mother, he can't follow me. And he didn't mean we ought to hate our family. He meant that we ought to love him so much that everything else comes so far after him that it looks like hate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he is number one in our lives. Yeah. What would it be? What would the church be? What might our country that is literally falling apart? I mean, absolutely falling apart right now. Amen. Yeah. Be like if we adore Jesus more than we do Amen. our political parties or our politicians or even, even our country itself. Guys, I love America, but I love Jesus more. Amen? Amen. 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 They said, blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Amen. 
There's recognition by some standing there that Jesus is the one prophesied of. And he was, by the way, the one prophesied of. Don't, there's no doubt about that. This is the one who is the root of Jesse. Yes. <laughs> this is the, the one who comes of the lineage of King David. This is the one who is eventually to sit on David's throne. Can I tell you something? When we see all the turmoil in Israel right now, that turmoil is because Jesus is coming to sit on the throne there one day. I'm telling you, there's a spiritual world at work, and I know there's politics involved, and I know there's 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 evil men that work through so many things. But can I tell you something? God works all that together. God has, is the grand orchestrator. And even regardless of the Rothschilds and regardless of what happened with Israel coming into land and what the purpose was as far as men were concerned. Listen, God made a promise to Abraham of a land that he would give his people. And he also prophesied that Jesus was going to come back to that land. And he didn't say he was coming back to Palestine. He said he's coming back to the land of Israel. And he is. Jesus entered Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. And we are closer now. We're coming up on Easter, I know. It's a week away. We're getting ready for Easter. People get, and I mean, it's, it's, it's always a special time for the Christian to come to Easter. To come to that time to celebrate that Jesus is alive. That the tomb is empty. That he is risen from the dead and he is Lord. We are closer now to the Lord's return than we are to the Lord's triumphal entry. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're closer to him riding a white horse yes. than we are to him riding a donkey. Amen. Amen. Amen? And listen, when he comes, there will be many in terror. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because they have rebelled against him. And they have, they have believed somehow they would defeat him because of the lies of Satan and the leadership of the Antichrist that will be set up during that time. And by the way, probably is already alive right now. Yeah. Amen. Notice I said probably, but I'm telling you, high probability. High probability. Oh, but think of those that are coming back with him. <laughs> oh, the Bible says he's coming with his armies. Right? And they're going to be coming, and I believe singing, Hosanna! To the highest! For the king has finally returned to the land! Get the throne ready, amen, for the one to be seated upon it. We won't be worried about elections or corruption politically or any of that because Jesus will rule and reign. It's by our heads. Musicians come this morning. Where do you stand? Are you at a crossroads today? Are you at a fork in the road? Are you at a place where two ways meet? Which way are you going to go? Are you going to go toward Jesus? Or are you going to walk away from him? The reality is we, we only have two choices. There's really not a third option here. We're either walking toward him or we're walking away from him. Listen, this morning, what road are you on? Have you chosen the narrow road? Or are you still on that wide road that leads to destruction?
said, Brother Jason, I'm on the wide road. Well, you need to change course. You need to repent. You need to turn to the Lord. And you need to allow the Lord to take you and lift you up from that place of this headed for destruction and give you a new path in life. You say, Brother Jason, I'm on the narrow road, but man, I've been falling down a lot lately. Well, let him pick you up. He wants to. Let him lift you up from the defeat that you may feel this morning and just start walking again. Maybe you, maybe circumstances of life have come. Maybe something from the past has, still has a grip and you've fallen down. But you know you know that you love him and you know you want to follow him. Listen, just let the Lord come along like that good Samaritan that he is and lift you up and just start walking again. You might not be in a run yet. You may just barely be able to walk for a bit. But just start walking. Just start serving. Just start carrying Jesus wherever you go. And that even in your weakness, He will use you. Even in your struggle, He will bring victory. Lord, I ask right now, across this building, if there's anyone that's not saved, firstly, I pray that right now, they would cry out to you, Lord. And they might pray something like this. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, today I, I want to turn from my sin. I repent. And I turn to you. I'm tired of walking this wide road and I'm ready to get on that narrow road with you, Lord. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I believe you rose from the dead. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And give me the strength to follow you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, his heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If that's you, here, here in a moment, we'll give the opportunity. If you pray that minute, to come forward and let this congregation know that you accepted Christ. But also right now, I want to talk to those that are saved. They're just not walking with Him the way we should. Why don't you cry out right now to Him? And you might pray something like this in your own words. Just say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm saved. But Lord, I'm no, I've not been living for you in the way I should. Lord, pick me up. Lord, give me strength to walk. Give me strength to run, to rise up eventually and have his wings of eagles. I want to wait on you, Lord. Lord, I repent of going back to some things that should have been left far behind. Forgive me, Lord. I just want to recommit my life to you fully today. And I want you to use me in the days ahead. Thank you for your forgiveness and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for not throwing the clay away. Thank you, Jesus, that I am safe and I'm secure in you. In Jesus' name, amen. You might want to come. Those that just prayed that, you might want to come if you want to just get in, in the altar and begin to pray and thank God for his mercy and his forgiveness. Whatever the need may be, it may be something I didn't even mention this morning, but the Lord is here to meet with you. So this altar is open. Father, now have your way we give this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me, whatever your need may be?
Won't you come? Just bring it to the Lord today. Whatever it may be, just bring it to the Lord. away this business today. She's called for the elders to come. She's called for us to gather around, to be anointed with oil, prayed for. So right now we're going to come. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we just we just lay hands on Miss Maxine. We thank you for what you've done for her. 
We thank you for the test results and the good test results that she continues to get. But Lord, you know the dizziness that she's facing. You know, the fear that comes and the anxiety that comes as a result of that, Lord. And so, God, I pray against that anxiety. I pray against that fear. And I pray against this, this dizziness that she's facing. I pray that would stop, Lord. That, God, you'll give her stability, God, as she gets around, as she stands, as she walks. As she does just the things that she desires to do, God. As she goes to town, as she works around the house, God. Father, we thank you for the health you've given her. But, Lord, we're asking, God, for you just to touch her and minister complete healing to her, God. And, Lord, that she'll have her stability. The anxiety will go. The, any fear will go, God. And that she'll be free from this, Lord. And we love you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes. I was going to just say Amen. Won't you come and stand here? Amen. Yeah, I can't see Pray for your daddy. Lord, we love you. God, first we want to thank you. Because Robert could be a it could be a whole lot worse than it is. You've kept him alive. And so, God, we're asking right now, God, now that as he begins to recover, we pray for that recovery. And, God, we pray you just draw him so close to you right now, God. I pray that he'll know you in ways that he's never known you in his life, God. That you, he will see your strength at work. He will see your power at work. He will see the love, God, that you have for him, Lord. And God, I just pray for him and I pray for Margaret Ann. I pray for the family, God, for Kenzie and all the family as they go through this season with him, God. Lord, I pray for the doctors and the nurses, Lord, as they work with him. They'll have the direction and know exactly, God, what to do to help him, Father. God, we just, we just pray for you to be in the midst, God, of all this, Lord. That, God, you will be right in the middle of everything happening right now with him there in the hospital. And you would just touch him. And ministry. And God, we pray for this lady, Lord, who's missing right now in this town, God. Lord, I don't know her personally, but you do. And Lord, you know where she is, God. And so, God, I pray right now for you to direct people, the right person, whoever it is, to where she is. I pray for her safety. I pray for, Lord, her to be able to come home for, for, to her family, God. I pray, God, that, Lord, you'll just, Lord, just anoint and give wisdom to those that are out there looking, God. That they'll find her, Lord, today, God. Let it happen today, Lord. Soon. And even in these next moments, God, I pray, Lord, that, that she'll be found, God. And so, Lord, just, Lord, we pray for, Lord, as we enter in this season of Easter. And, Lord, so much in the world, God, I pray that eyes will be turned to you, God. And I pray that Jesus will be exalted above all, God. That, Lord, as we realize we can't look to man, that man cannot deliver this this nation or this world, God, but to recognize the only true deliverance is in Jesus, in Jesus alone, Lord. So let us look to Him, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us find our hope and our peace. Let us find our direction. Let us find everything, Lord, in Him. We love You. We give You praise, and we pray for every other need that may be here. Lord, I know there's some standing here that have needs that have not been mentioned, but you know what they are. Their families are struggling. Their families that are, are hurting. There are, there's divisions. There's there's so many things that, that that Satan is trying to do. And so, God, I pray. I pray against addiction, God, right now in the name of Jesus. I just pray, God, Lord, for healing right now in the name of Jesus, God. And those, I just, I, Father, I just pray, God, that we'll turn it all over, God, today, and see Your transforming power, God. And work in our lives, God, like never before. God, we love you. We thank you and praise you for everything you're doing in our midst right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Somebody give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Well, we'll have church tonight at 6. Uh, Freedom Seekers tomorrow night uh, at 6 30. And uh, of course, Wednesday night at 6 30. And first time we've done this, but this Good Friday night, we're going to meet and have the Lord's Supper here at 6 30. And so, first time we've done that, but I'm excited about it. So, I hope you'll come and be here for that. Ah, yes, 4 30 this afternoon for the men's. Women's discipleship. So you're welcome to come. Even if you missed the first couple, you're welcome to come and be with us. Amen. Brother Harry Farmer, would you pray for us? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for forgiveness, Lord, for Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for allowing us, Lord, to see the presence here today. Lord, to see you working with people coming together in one home, united, Lord, and together, Lord, to serve you, to praise you, Lord, to ask you, Lord, for, for blessings, Lord, for help. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we'll see you, Lord. We'll see you show up in these moments, Lord. And that you show us that you are the God, the living God, that hears his people. I pray, Lord, you go with us the rest of this day, Lord. We thank you and pray for it just a few moments ago, this busy morning. Lord, we continue to pray daily, Lord, constantly for this God. And I ask you to, once again, give us what we fear you, Lord, and strengthen us to serve you in the rest of the time we have left.